I mean, yeah. I know that my accountant always tells me that his comedians are he they all write off their psychotherapy bills. In other words, he's saying to me that <laughs> these are the ones that that it's not easy being a comic. Yeah, I mean, is that? I don't know. Man. No, it's not. You easy. seem like you enjoy it. It is fun. Yeah, it's different. I mean, what does that mean? It's not. It's not easy being a soldier. Okay, it's not easy being an EMT. It's not easy being a police mm -hmm. officer. It's not easy being a school teacher in an inner city school. It's n it's not easy being a heart surgeon. It's there's uh, comedy is not that fucking mm. hard. Peep, there's this old expression, the hard I don't know who the fuck said this, but I've repeated it ad nauseum. The hardest thing that's ever happened to you is the hardest thing that's ever happened to you. Or the worst thing that's ever happened to you is the worst thing that's ever happened to you. And that worst thing could be you're a little kid and your toy breaks. Uh huh. Or it could be your family got killed in a war. You know, it really depends. And so, what level of resilience you have is entirely dependent upon what your life experiences are and what you've come to expect. And there's a lot of people that are comedians that really seem to think that what they're doing is so goddamn difficult. And uh, yeah, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but Jesus Christ, what a great life. Uh. You know, you're you're telling jokes. You're making people laugh. It should be wonderful and celebrated. But a lot of them are they do a really poor job of mental management and of like assessing their own like psychological mm -hmm. issues and and coming up with like real methods of mitigation. So why do people bail out on the nights that they're that they're not resistance? Just, it's they're what are they, they're afraid of bombing, they're afraid of no, getting up there and No, they're just uh, not being pros. Uh, that's really what it is. It's like uh, it's that's one of the reasons why your book resonated so much. It's cuz uh, like it's just there's a thing that you described that you just nailed it and you called it resistance, but there's this feeling that you just don't want to sit and write. You don't want to work. You know, like when I get in front of my computer, there's like an urge like, hey, let's go see what's in YouTube. Hey, let's go fucking roam around. Mm -hmm. Let's go to dig.com, see what the wackiest stories uh -huh. are. Let's go to CNN. And, uh -huh. You know, it, that that is part of the resistance. Like it keeps you from just sitting down and working. And I don't know what that is because you know in the back of your head that if you do the work, you'll have more ideas. If you have more ideas, you'll have more material. If you have more material, you'll be able to pick the best material and your show will be better. And then the audience will have a better time. Your career will go better and all these things. And yet that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? You still feel it, right? Yeah. And it's totally universal, I can tell you, from the emails that I get, from the letters that I get. And it's not only is it universal and that everybody experiences it, but they all seem to experience it with the same script. You know, mm. you're not worthy, you're too old, too young, too fat, too thin, whatever. Or let's do something else. Let's distract ourselves mm. with something else. So everybody gets the same thing. I mean, I always say that it's, it's, um, it's a force of nature. You know, it's not personal. It's not specific to you, even though it, that voice in your head sounds like it is specific to you. It's saying Joe, and then it's hitting you right in the points that are your sore points, you know? Yeah. But it's really not personal. Everybody seems to experience the same thing. 